Hello IT people, in that video we will review the most legend NVIDIA graphic card and I'm talking about GTX 750 Ti. This graphic card is legend because of few reasons. One of them is the price. This is a budget GPU but for its low price and this is actually the second reason. It shows a nice performance for low power consumption. And the third reason is frequency plus that GPU is overclockable. Price for that GPU on AliExpress around 40 to 45 US dollars. Depends on the cooling system. Let's speak more about GPU. Graphic card built on Maxwell architecture first generation. The graphic processor is GM107. In games the GPU has pretty similar results like 650 Ti. But if we are talking about overclocking and other specifications, for example consumption, 750 Ti is leader here. In fact that was the main target for Maxwell architecture. The GPU still using an PC builds. Graphic card has a small form factor, does not require powerful power supply and shows the nice results in a modern line titles. And let's review technical specifications from official NVIDIA website. CUDA Core 640, base clock is 1020 MHz, in boost up to 1080 MHz, graphic memory 2 gigs of DDR5, effective memory clock 5400, memory interface with 128 bit, supports API DirectX 12, and graphic card power 60 watts. I have version from Gigabyte Windforce, which is working on 1059 MHz, in boost up to 1137, also has one 6 pin power connector, and I consider this is a good sign, because when you use that input, it keeps a stable clock in overclocking. The weak side here is the memory interface width. We can't increase it, but we can overclock our memory to make it work faster. So I will clock the core on 40 MHz and memory to 307 MHz, which I think is a nice result, because the effective memory clock reached 6026 MHz. The card working on 1377 in boost. Let's be realistic, that card can run all new games on ultra settings and full HD. I hope it can run on the low settings, but I believe that in modern line titles you can get a nice result. I will test few heavy games as well. All games I will try to test in a full HD resolution, on a different settings depends on the game. In heavy games for me, 30 FPS would be enough. All tests are recorded by using video capture card, so there is no any impact on the final FPS. For our GPU I placed AMD Ryzen 7 1700, overclocked to 3.8 GHz, with 16 gigs working on 3266 MHz, to avoid Avoid any bottleneck. The first game on our test is Fortnite, all settings on middle and full HD resolution. Usually people are playing on low as I know, and on the lowest resolution. We are on the top of the mountain, looking at the long distance. This fact reduces FPS as well. After 15 minutes, we have 74 FPS in average. On low settings and resolution, I believe you will see more FPS. Frame graph has pulsations, but the gameplay looks smooth. The next game on our test is PUBG, all on minimum and full HD resolution. Same conditions, looking on a long distance. And here was wanted. FPS not high, an average 87 FPS, but the frame time and graph is good. Indoors you will see more FPS for sure. And here is only one way to increase FPS, is killing the resolution. Next game on our test is Heavy. This is Witcher 3 in a full HD in middle settings. And you may ask, why in middle? Cause Witcher more demand than PUBG. But as I said before, my goal is to reach at least 30 FPS in our age. And in this game on the middle settings, we have 40 FPS, which is worthly for that GPU. But only one problem here is the high frame time, which means we have a bad responsible time. But if you want to improve your gameplay, you have to decrease settings.
Next game on our test is Battlefield 1, single player mod and seen on the tank. All settings on middle and full HD resolution, also including anti aliasing. And here with your memory is full. The picture quality is fine, but frame graph and time bad. But let me tell you one thing, I would finish that game like that, cause when you're out of tank, running around the frame time is better. In average we have 38 FPS, and this is enough to finish that game. Last game on our test is Metro Exodus. If you remember, that was a challenge, even for such GPU like GTX 680. Here we have also low settings and full HD resolution. And here is the same problem, 2 gigs of VRAM is fully loading, high frame time and low FPS. But due to the FPS in average we have, the FPS graph looks very bad, full of pulsations. Frame time has a problem as well. But this is one of the hardest scenes in the game, when you're running on the other locations, you might see better result. But I'm surprised. I did not expect that GPU can run that game. So as always, last words, the GPU still can run games, yeah sure, games like Metro, you will see problems in there, but its GPU is still alive, even in 2019. At the same time, we have a fair price, but if you add 15 US dollars, you can get 9060, which is better in any games. If you have a very limited budget, then ok, go for it. Another way, you should think about 960. Thanks all for watching that video, I hope you like it and it was useful for you. Please write me a comment and if you like it, then you know what to do. See you in the next one.